The missionary. Good morning. Join us as we sing a couple of worship songs and enter into his presence.
episode of this week. But I tell you that God's been good to me. God's been good to me. He's been better than me. He's been better than me than I've been to myself. So if y'all are mad at this morning, I think I'm going to give God some more.
your circumstances. Because it looks like at the end of the year, in the beginning of the year, everything seems to come against us. Amen. Don't look at your circumstances. Don't look how big they are. Look at your God. Amen. And how awesome your God is. Keep your eyes focused on God. This is our youth Sunday. They've been preparing for this day. This is their youth challenge that day. And I don't want them to get discouraged because the congregation ain't full. I want you to remind the young people that God is in the house today. Amen. And guess what he's going to honor? He's going to honor your, your, your excitement about doing God's worship. Amen. And about it, it will be so winning. So... We're going to turn the remainder of our service over to our young people. I had warned my Lion of Judah. You know Jesus is the Lion of Judah, isn't he? And so I got my Lion of Judah shirt on. And I got my kicks on because I'm trying to identify with our young people. But I can't choose a winner today. I can't choose a winner today. I, uh, I, can't, I can't choose a particular person team to be on, but I do want to let all the young people know I'm on your team. I'm on your team. Good morning. Before we get started, I want to invite, uh, uh, welcome everyone here. But the Rock Service is going to have a trivia challenge. We want to hype it up. We want everyone to get active. So <coughs> the first trivia question, uh, we want to uh, you to try to guess it first. But if not, adults are more than welcome to participate. Name three of the Ten Commandments. Stand up if you know
How many books are in the Bible? Stand if you know it. Yep. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
made you who you are. Robert, the 25th, Octavius Roberts, the 28th, Maggie Chapman. 
just love to have folk come out, but don't let this be your last time. Amen. Come on back. Come on back to the park. We know how to take care of folks. And we're a family here in Paul. And we look forward to seeing you again here amongst us. Y'all, let's give our youth a big round of applause. So next week will be our Christmas celebration here at church. Our Christmas celebration here at church <laughs> for third Sunday. I mean, third Sunday will be. So we look for everybody to come back and have an enjoy the time with us on third Sunday after church. Uh, we still having some refreshments after church. So uh, those of you that are here, there will be some something unique, something different waiting on you behind uh, after our service today. We're going to ask our stewards to come at this time and receive our morning offering.
And you got to have on a certain color or a certain, certain thing at the baby shower. And so every time I'm invited, I'm going to try to show up because this is an extravaganza. Because it's, it's different now back when I was having babies. Anybody, anybody remember the baby shower back then? They were definitely different. The only thing folk got excited about was the cake, the, the gifts, and the food. You might have a little decoration here and there, but if your cake was beautiful, and you had a lot of gifts, and the spread was nice, that was a baby shower. And we didn't go to venues, y'all. You had a baby shower at somebody's house, didn't you? And on the job, they take you to the conference room. That's how it used to be when, 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 when I was having babies. Uh, the decoration, now you couldn't compare the decorations to what they have now. Oh no, you, you get some little streamers somewhere, some little stuff you done ordered from the dollar store talking about some happy baby shower. <laughs> and, 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 and things were just simpler 20 years ago. But if I, if I have a baby now, like, you know, like this baby right here, I'm going to have to get all of y'all to help me play. <laughs> if my, if my grades come along right now, I'm going to have to get everybody, everybody to raise your hand and help me play at these baby shots. Because it's going to take all of us. All of us. But in today's text, Jesus is showered with expensive gifts. And I call this shower an unannounced shower because the shower was not planned. Mm. There was no balloons, mm. no three-tiered cake, no banquet spread, no, no photo booth, none of that. These men showed up without notice. These wise men of uh, uh, magi were intellectuals. They were very smart men with significant uh, knowledge about philosophy and, and, and medicine and, and science. They also were enthusiastic about astrology and they were known for being able to reveal the meaning of dreams. We have always assumed that there were three wise men. How many of you thought there were just three wise men? But the Bible doesn't say how many men it was. The only thing the Bible tells us that it was three gifts. So we automatically assume that it was what? Three men. But it could have been a number of men. The Bible doesn't give you a specific number of how many, so we have to be careful when we, when we uh, translate from the Bible what the Bible is actually saying. We come up with three men. And it may have been a group of men. But these men followed the star of Bethlehem, the seed of promised Messiah. Y'all, this wasn't just no inner star. This star was spectacular, an astrological mystery, leading the way to the king. When they arrived in Jerusalem, the Bible says, the Bible says that they asked, where is the man? Born King of the Jews. Amen. We saw this song. It arose and have come. We have come to worship him. Where is this King of the Jews? Y'all now Herod was king at that time, Herod the Great. And he hears about this child who is the fulfillment of scripture. Now, Herod has great leadership attributes, y'all. He's a wonderful leader. He can be a, he's, a, he's a wonderful architect. He's an administrator. He can do all of these things. But Herod had a dog side. He was cruel and an evil person. And he killed his wife. He killed his mother-in-law. And he killed three sons. We're not talking about no ordinary man. Amen. We're talking about a, a, a sadistic type man. And now, y'all, he was planning to kill this new baby, Jesus, that was born to Mary and Joseph. So he calls me. 
He calls them in. He calls all the religious leaders. And he calls them and he said, where is this baby to be born? What's the birthplace of this baby? Then they quote from the prophet Micah in chapter 2. And they disclose that the baby is going to be born in Bethlehem. So he continues, y'all, his wicked plot. And, and, and he calls a secret meeting with the wise men. And he persuades them to give him a specific time that they saw the star. He said, tell me when y'all saw the star. Because he's calculating now when was this baby born. Then he deceives them. He said, y'all go find him. Y'all go find the baby. He said, when y'all find him, let me know where he is because I want to worship him too. Herod had no desire to worship Jesus, the Son of God. Herod wanted to take Jesus' life. The wise men follow the star to the location where Jesus is born. And, 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 and pay attention here, y'all. Pay attention here because this is another thing that we sometimes get confused. In verse 11 it says, On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. On coming to the house, this verse says house. It doesn't say stable. It doesn't say animal location. It, it, it says house. And due to this, a lot of scholars believe that the wise men didn't show up the night that Jesus was born. They believe that he showed up when Jesus was in the house with his mother, which might have been weeks later, it might have been days later, it might have been months later. Some of them believe he was two years old when they showed up. But when they showed up, they had a baby shower. They showered him with gifts. And nonetheless, when they saw Jesus with Mary, they celebrated him. Every baby should be what? Celebrated. Amen. Every Baby, should she celebrate? Giving a baby shower, a gift of life has entered the world. And this was not an extraordinary gift. They fell down and worshiped Mary's baby. King of kings, Lord of lords, mighty Lord of Star, wonderful counselor, Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords, Alpha and Omega, my Redeemer, my Savior, Fool. Hooded towels. I love hooded towels, y'all. 
Uh, you can give them a hundred times everything you can give them, they're going to give you the name. Amen. There's no gift to very seldom that you get at a baby shower that you're not going to need. Amen. But these wise men presented Jesus with gold. They gave him precious metal, this precious metal that was used for jewelry and ornaments and, 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 and used for curtains. And then they gave him frankincense and myrrh. And these were expensive fragrances. Expensive fragrances. They presented him with these good gifts that were suited for his kingship, suited for him as royalty. I'm asking you, what you give Jesus this season? What you give Jesus this season? Are you still complaining? Are you still hating? Are you still negative? Are you still talking about folks? What you give Jesus this season? Whose name is at the top of your list? If you love Jesus, he's only asked you for two things. He asked you for two things. He said, if you love me, then do what? He said, keep my commands. He said, love your God with all your heart, mind, soul. He said, do that. He said, do that. And then he said, what? Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what Jesus asked of you. He said, love God. Don't have no God before him. Make God the head of your life. And then he asked you to love your neighbor as yourself. Forget all the other gifts you've given. All of them are insignificant. They don't mean nothing. But if you do those two things, then you love Jesus. The way we take care of each other, the way we love on each other, the, yes, way, we yes. learn, the way we learn to forgive each other, the way we learn to, to, to bless each other and, and keep each other covered. Love God. Love God with all your heart and mind and soul. And then love your neighbor as yourself. That's the gift that you can give Jesus this season. Before leaving, the wise men had a dream mm. that revealed who Herod really was. It showed them that Herod was the enemy and his ultimate plan was to kill Jesus. So they made a decision right then and there they go home another way and never to tell Herod where they found this child. It's interesting because they made a decision to go another route. Won't it do it, y'all? Yeah. Won't it do it? Yeah. In a town where Jesus will change your whole direction. They didn't, they didn't tell him to change water in the wine.
right. Call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. You calling on a whole lot of names. Yeah. Whole lot of names folk asking for everything this Christmas. Getting ready for everything this Christmas. But call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. My mother in law, she's oftentimes walking around the house. And um, I hear her walk into a room. And she'll just call on Jesus. Jesus. She said, Help me, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And at first I was like, She must not be feeling too well. But I learned something, y'all. Mm. I learned something. I learned something. You don't get to be 87 years old. <laughs> Unless you have a little talk with Jesus. Amen. She understands that when her body ails a little bit, Jesus. Yes, she yes. understands when she wants yes. to go on when she can't yes. get
He said, cast all your cares on me. And I'll be your burden bearer. Sometimes it's too much for us to carry. Sometimes life gets so hard that we get exhausted, we get drained. But God said, come on, don't take it with you. God, we 
need you right now. All of us stand in the need of prayer right now. But move, Holy Ghost. Move, Holy Ghost.
when the devil puts that evil thought in your head, that your situation ain't gonna get no better, say thank you, Lord. Oh, the cards? 
So if you fill out a card and didn't turn them in, we'll have a, a collection post out in the back. In the back. Mm -hmm. There are some refreshments in the back, you all. Uh, please stay and grab something. Those of you who came out and visited with us today, don't let this be your last time. Come out and worship with us again. We're so glad that you celebrated this invite challenge with us. Our youth are going to be doing some amazing things. I think they're also going to be going this month to the uh, lights, the the, the, cele the uh, celebration of lights in in, in Road Town. And anybody else who want to attend that, please, please, uh, please get in touch with us. And we we met up once before, and that was a wonderful time. Just dress warm. Ooh, bring your blanket too. We had a wonderful time, right? So uh, we're so glad that all of you came out of worship with us. We're going to uh, be celebrating our Christmas program on the third Sunday. Some of you might be asked to participate. Thank you so, so very much. Let us stand. To him that is able to keep us from falling. As we leave this place, but never your presence, we ask that you will send the peace that surpasses all understanding, O oh God, the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit and your presence to abide with us henceforth and forevermore. Let the people of God say amen. 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 Oh, the black Lord bless this food for the nourishment of our bodies and for the fellowship of this church family. In Jesus' name.